Do you remember waking up when you were really little and watching whatever show came up on PBS? I'm talking about shows like Super Y, Arthur, and even Curious George. Open wide! Bruh. I even remember watching episodes of Barney that my parents had on VHS. Well now imagine you're that one to three year old sitting on a rug in front of your TV, and what comes on is a media Hello. channel you don't remember your parents turning on. A program simply called Kids TV, and this episode is called Two Brothers. You're welcome to the show. And what you see is two characters, one named Phil and the other one is named Ed. There's also this other character called Buggy. But when Phil goes up to pet the bug, he accidentally crushes it and kills it. Phil wants to get a closer look. And then it's here where the show takes a complete shift. Because we can hear footsteps coming from inside this home. And before we know it, Ed is taken. Phil then takes it upon himself to look for Ed and so he ventures inside of this home. However, what awaits him is nothing but pure misery. Hey everyone, it's Wildman, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this channel that I found called Nathan Frost. The channel has produced a ton of these VHS-style animations, and they're all really creepy. With this one that we just covered being the first in a series of videos the channel would go on to upload. They all give this kind of oddly comforting feeling to them, but then that feeling is immediately ripped away as soon as things start to shift, which only makes things that much more terrifying, giving you that sense of security at first. But yeah, before we begin, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel like the video and comment bruh as always because that helps me out for some reason but real quick i did want to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video which is fume cold turkey may be great on sandwiches but there's a better way to break your bad habits and we're not talking about some crazy mind control to get you to stop What's wrong with you i don't we're talking about our sponsor fume and they look at the problem in a very different way not everything in a bad habit is so wrong so instead of a drastic uncomfortable change why not just remove the bad from the habit fume is an innovative award nominated device that does just that. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses all natural delicious flavors. You get it, instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit very easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. It. And this isn't the first time we've been sponsored by Fume, and I am very happy to say that I'm super happy with my Fume device. And I do really like how pleasant the flavored air is. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com slash wowman or scan the QR code code and use code WOWMAN to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code WOWMAN to save an additional 10% off on your order today. Now these episodes start off fairly creepy enough and the second one is called The Funny Face Man and you can pretty much already expect this to be not so funny. Within this episode, the man greets himself to the viewer before showing all of the faces that he can make. I am the phony face man. Watch. <laughs> and the audience is completely eating this up. They're applauding. They're having a really good time. That is until the funny face man takes things too far. And 
what's even creepier about this video is that you can visibly see how much it hurts him whenever he has to shift his face. It almost makes you wonder if the funny face man is being forced to do this by the network. Or perhaps an even creepier theory that the funny face man, tired of doing this day after day after being a captive of the network, decided to shift his face to the point where it finally just killed him, because this is the only way that he would be free. Now these were just the first two episodes in these series of videos uploaded by this channel, and this third one gets even more freaky. That's me. It's called The Birthday Boy Show, and now there isn't much story elements to it, at least not at first. Because we're shown the birthday boy and things are pretty normal at first. He stands in front of his house, but then the house comedically runs away from him. Shortly after, the tape glitches out, and it seems like a different piece of media was stitched on top of this original episode. Because if you are unfamiliar to how VHS is used to work, you used to be able to record stuff on top of an already pre-recorded episode on the VHS, which would delete the original footage. We're shown the birthday boy once again, but things are very different. The birthday boy is standing in front of a pile of faces that resemble his own. And perhaps these are the faces of other children that have had their birthday here. There's also some pretty disturbing stuff about these videos, you know, aside from the main point of them. Because in every single episode, there is this piece of text that appears saying, watch. You can barely make it out, but it's there. It's almost like the program is trying to subliminally get children to keep watching, no matter how disturbing these broadcasts get. It's also kind of reminding me of the YouTube Kids rabbit hole. Because if you guys didn't know already, YouTube Kids is filled with some pretty disturbing stuff that... I haven't covered, but I know there's a lot of channels that do. How one second you can be watching an episode of Super Y, and then it'll start auto-playing some really distasteful stuff made by people that are horrible. And because children don't really know what they're seeing, they'll just keep watching. And so perhaps a similar thing is happening here. The parents watching the beginning of these episodes and then leave their kids to watch on their own. And the children are met with these really disturbing scenes as the tapes continue. And in this next one called the Mr. Teeth Incident, things only get that much more disturbing because this one, as opposed to the previous installments, starts off by being disturbing right away. <laughs> Mr. Teeth turns to face the viewer, quote, be like him, perfect teeth, perfect skin, look how happy he is, why aren't you happy? After this final message, Mr. Teeth's entire face falls off, leaving only his skull. And then the series takes perhaps the creepiest turn. Because when I first saw these videos, I didn't think they'd be much more than just some creepy animations. But this video gets a bit meta when it says this. Please turn off the television. Please turn off the television. Please turn off the tele- Please turn off- and what follows after this warning is a collection of supposed perfect teeth. Where these teeth came from, they were most likely harvested from other children like Mr. Teeth. What's even stranger about this video is that the sun has appeared in every single episode thus far. And in this one, it makes a much larger appearance because we can see its limbs being removed, subsequently killing it. Also, a little bit of a side note, this ending song kind of reminds me of that clock ride that they have at Chuck E. Cheese. Alright, so in this one, it's not even an episode of kids TV, it's some found footage that someone recorded. 
We can see this blob of a creature standing in the corner moving its limbs, with bloody body parts completely surrounding it, saying, bad worms are punished, the sky has a face, watch. So at this point we can pretty much establish that the sun is responsible for the network and is responsible for all of these messed up programming for children. Also what's interesting is that in this blob we see in this episode, it's the same one that killed Phil and Ed in that first episode. And perhaps the limbs we see on the ground belong to those children. Hello, welcome to the Pumpkin Pal. In this episode called Pumpkin Pal Phone, it's this programming that's supposed to make it look like you're supposed to call Pumpkin Pal and ask him some questions. Hello? I think some other shows in the 90s did this as well. You would call in to subscribe to some service that would tell you when the show would be on again. Although I am having a really vague memory about this, but all I could find about this was this image, and I don't even know what cartoon this is from. But in this one, it seems like you're supposed to call in to ask Pumpkin Pal any question you like. Sort of like a radio show for kids, although the questions would most likely be like, what's your favorite color, or how do I solve this question on my homework? However, when Pumpkin Pal finally gets a phone call, a worm slithers out of the phone and goes inside of him. However, just off screen, we can see someone directing Pumpkin Pal, forcing him to continue with this broadcast. The worm making its way inside of Pumpkin Pal, and eventually just paralyzes his body, and then it rips his jaw right open. Do you want to know a secret? Come closer closer look down pumpkin pal just sits there in front of the mutilated person he just killed however it isn't long before the worms completely devour pumpkin pal What's left of him wakes up in this dark room. As he crawls on the floor, he comes across another character we've met, the both of them rotting away. The final scene is of Pumpkin Pal back in the studio, however his face is completely rotted, but mushed together to resemble his lost face. And in this room we can also see the perfect teeth that once belonged to Mr. Teeth, before he too was killed. Now as we get deeper into this channel, things start to get a little more convoluted, so to quickly establish, it seems like this network is being run by this son who has been forcing their cast to record one final episode each before they are then killed in extremely gruesome ways, by ripping their teeth off or putting worms in them that will eat them from the inside out, every death being a result of the show's producer, The Sun. Episode 7 is in Japanese, and it starts off by saying that on August 18th, 1992, a children's show network was hijacked by an unknown individual or a group of them. Here is a recording of one of them. Viewer discretion is advised. And like I mentioned, this time around, the show is in Japanese. Now, unfortunately, I do not speak Japanese, so I'll do my best to try and describe what is happening here. <laughs> Thank you. 
What starts off innocent enough begins to show the moon with its insides ripped out. The video shows a variety of characters with horribly disfigured bodies, one of them even attacking the camera. But cutting again, we can see that this creature has put on Mr. Teeth's ripped off pair of teeth. This ends the broadcast interruption, and it ends with the Japanese network sending out a message saying if you have any information about the hijack, to please call this number. In this one, we return to the original TV for Kids network in an episode about the human body, so you already know that this is going to be pretty messed up. This episode also reminds me a lot of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, and you'll see why. This is the human body. Lungs are very important to the human body cause of their ability to help us breathe. This is what a healthy lung should look like because it... Within it, the lesson on the human body is quickly interrupted by perhaps the most disturbing thing we've seen in this series. So if your discretion is advised for this next part. We're shown one of the characters on a hospital bed, about to be operated on against their will. At least that's what it seems like based on their frantic panting. What's shown after this is a lengthy creature appearing to have its heart ripped out of its body. However, they're somehow still alive. This is the patient that was operated on. And the video ends with this extremely disturbing clip that I'll play for you. This final episode in the series is called The Midnight Show, which chronologically would be the first broadcast in the series to be released, as every other episode um, post-dates 1989. After the tape switches, it tells us about the rope worm. features than the last one. Spinning. Bouncing. Which reminds me a lot of that worm that you can buy at pretty much every amusement park you go to, that little worm on a string that you somehow always end up with. But this isn't any ordinary worm. Today. The words go to sleep come on screen, and what we're shown after is the midnight show. A show that is not in any way suitable for younger audiences, but I mean, when has this show ever been? What the smiling face shows us is an episode called Dreams. Within it, a body is tied up to four strings, one for each limb, like a puppet being controlled by its marionette. And from within the darkness, a hand comes out to control the body. The body continues to dance, and it says, I love this. I want to do this forever.
And if this wasn't creepy enough, the smiling face tells us that he's going to be taking us into an even darker part of his mind. He's taking us into his nightmares. And what's a lie here are so disturbing that you might want to look away. We're shown a mouth that seems to be sewn onto two legs, creating this very scary monstrosity. That if I had a nightmare about this, I don't think I'd be able to sleep again. After fading out, we can see a face in the corner of this dark room just staring at the viewer. We then see a face of one of the characters forced into this program. It's a representation of the audience, a warning that if you are still watching to stop immediately, saying that this show will rot your eyes. There is something wrong with this show that seems to be working like a curse on its viewers, unable to take their eyes off the screen. It then shows us who the broadcaster of this program is. The final shot of the episode is telling you that the show is over, because now you are going to be televised. But yeah, that was a kids TV series, I really hope you enjoyed it. This one definitely freaked me out in a way that more than I thought it would. Just claymations in general are always super creepy when they are done right like this. Also be sure to show some support to the series' creator right here, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well as liking the video and commenting bro. But yeah, huge thank you to my ultimate tiers, Alejandro from the Tower, 1998, K-pop lover X3, and Kareem Ariano. Thank you. But yeah, thank you so much for spending some time with me. It's always super great, and I'll see you in the next one. Love ya. Bye.